Now we are on the session number three. I mean, in the session number two of this uh, second week. So in this case, it's just uh, the second day. Um, we are uh, in the middle of this week. We are just going to have uh, two more sessions uh, after this one. Uh, you know that we need to complete the um, section number two. And in this case, it's the section number three and also the midterm. Um, right now it's raining kind of hard. So it's um, normal that in some cases I have like some troubles with uh, my connection, but we are going to try to end the, um, the session uh, like in the hour. Uh, you know that yesterday we were talking about the demonstrative the pronouns. Uh, we were talking about the use of these words and also we were talking about um, how can we use all of them. In this case, we have just four. And today we are going to see like the number uh, five and six. And also we are going to make the exercises. So we are going to have uh, the two different exercises that we are going to complete. Uh, on the topic that we were developing yesterday and we are going to end um, this topic today. Uh, we are going to complete the topic of the demonstrative pronouns and then we are going to see the next topic that we are going to develop today because we are going to have um, this topic today and also tomorrow. We are going to have two days with the same topic because um, it's not like kind of long, but uh, we have a lot of information on this, the second topic. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, right now, uh, I'm going to look for the document. So give me a second. Okay, I was saying that we are on the session number two. This is the second session of this week. Uh, we are talking about the demonstrative um, pronouns. Uh, we are seeing some of the information that we have related to this topic. We have some exercise, uh, I mean, some uh, examples of the demonstrative uh, pronouns. We have four and we are going to complete the last two um, words that we have on this topic. And I was saying also that um, it's raining kind of hard here. So if you have troubles listening to me or um, in if in a moment or in a specific uh, moment I have problems, with my connection is because it is raining. And today, the raining began like almost um, at seven. So it's kind of complicated when we are on the session and it is raining like this because I have like problems to listen the audio of the computer because it's like very, um, noisy the rain is very noisy right now so i don't i don't think that you are listening the the sound of the rain but for me it's kind of complicated because it's it's very very um noisy but i'm going to try to understand uh, if you have a question or something like that but we are going to continue with this a uh, second part of this topic remember that i was saying yesterday that we are going to have two different um, exercises. And today we are going to end with the use of here and there. And also we are going to have the first exercise. Then we are going to have another exercise 
um, that we are going to complete in a couple of minutes. But today we are going to begin with the number five, the demonstrative uh, pronoun number five. The, these ones are like the extra information that we have about the demonstrative. Recuerden que esto ya es información extra de los demostrativos porque ya tenemos los cuatro principales y ahora vamos a agregar dos, eh, dos demostrativos extra. So we are with the number five and this one is the word here. And this information said that here, the pronoun here is used to refer to a location near the speaker. Estamos hablando del de lugar, ¿verdad? De algo que está cerca de nosotros. Recuerden que los demostrativos nos hablaban también de la cercanía que teníamos con el objeto. And we have some of these, these words that are, are referring to the place in which something is. And in this case, we are talking about something that is near us. Algo que está cerca de nosotros. Now we have the examples. And this one said, here are the keys. Here are the keys. Aquí están las llaves. Please come here. Please come here. Ven aquí. So we are talking that we need that someone comes to the place in which we are in that moment. We have more examples. Here is my work, or in this case, my document. I think my mom is here. Here you have This is the document. I have my wallet here. So we have this kind of ex examples in which we are using this word because we are talking about something that we have near us. So, um, Palabras, ¿verdad? O son oraciones en las que vamos a explicar que algo está cerca de nosotros y que lo tenemos a nuestro alcance. Now, we are going to see the last one, that is the number uh, six. In the number six, we have the word there. And this one said that the pronoun there is used to refer to a location far from the speaker. I think that you guessed that information because we are talking about words that are related to, to the same thing. They are different um, when we are writing them, but in this case, we are like uh, talking about the same uh, situation. We have three words that uh, we can use when the, the thing is near us on the space. And the other three are uh, when we are talking about something that is far from us. Tenemos la misma información para los seis. Tres de ellos se refieren a eh, que el objeto está cerca de nosotros. 
Y tres de ellos se refieren a que el objeto está lejos de nosotros. Así que en este caso la información eh, tiende a repetirse, pero las palabras, ¿verdad? Son totalmente diferentes. I mean, in this case, that is not the point. Give me a second. Okay, in this case, the pronoun there. is used and we have also the example there is my car I want to go there. Another example, there is the paper. My dad works there. There is the concert. We're going to change this one. I think it is not a good idea to go there. So in this case, we have the examples related to this word. Um, you know that we have like different words that we can use to talk about um, the place of something. But that is not the main point of these words. They are talking about uh, some specific um, ideas. And in this case, we are talking about different things. And they are uh, like changing or they are taking the place of that thing. Because we are not using the names. We are using the pronouns. And that's the main idea of these words. Básicamente no estamos hablando de la locación, no estamos hablando del lugar en el que se encuentran, sino de los objetos a los que nos estamos refiriendo. En este caso, pues obviamente estamos hablando, ¿verdad?, de en dónde están posicionados, pero básicamente nuestro eh, objetivo principal es cambiar, ¿verdad?, eh, los nombres de los objetos por estos pronombres para hacer un poco más fácil, ¿verdad? La comunicación. Now, we have a, um, a paragraph in which we are going to apply the knowledge of the, um, the pronouns. These um, uh, specific pronouns that are the demonstrative pronouns But let me see if I have this one. A ver. I have the exercise here, so give me a second. We're going to make like an exercise about reading. 
So we are going to, um, like, we are going to put into practice the way in which we can read a text. And if we can understand what is the main idea on this, um, on this text. And of course, you are going to tell me what are the words that we are missing on that paragraph. We have this uh, information. You are going to read this information. And then I'm going to read every um, sentence. And when we have the blank space, you are going to tell me what is the best option for this exercise. Vamos a leer primero despacio, ¿verdad? Esta información. Luego vamos a volverlo a leer, en este caso yo lo voy a ir leyendo y ustedes me van a ir diciendo cuál es la opción que ustedes encontraron que quedaba mejor en ese espacio. Así que vamos a tener five minutes to complete this reading. Um, we are going to begin with the begin answering this exercise at a 27, I mean 17, not 27, because we are not in 20. Vamos a leerlo, o vamos a empezar a darle respuesta a las 8.17. So, let's read the information.
Okay, we are going to read again this information and we are going to try to give our answers to this paragraph or this information that we have here. So in this case, we have the following information. I went to the grocery store in search of chocolate candies. After looking for a while, I realized that were no candies in the places I was looking for. So I decide to ask the manager of the store where I could find some. I approached the manager and said, hi, I'm looking for some candies. Can you help me? The manager looked at me and asked, well, have you looked over? He said, pointing to the other end of the store. No, I replied, but I have looked on, I slept there, here. And I found nothing. Oh no, so say the man. We don't sell those candies on these aisles. We sell chocolate way over. The manager and I look at each other and start walking to the opposite end of the store. Finally, we reach the candy section. Okay, the manager said, pointing to the candies on the shelf. We have strawberry, chocolate, and vanilla candies. Which kind were you looking for? Well, first I want some of, I said, pointing to the chocolate candies far up on the top of the shelf. But now I think I will try some of here. I said and grab a handful of vanilla candies. Thank you for the help. I said and start walking out the door. Hey, the man Jill, are you going to pay for? So in this case, we are talking about someone that is in a store in which they are like uh, selling uh, candies and chocolates. And in this case, this person could not find the candies on the store. But at the end, uh, this person was at the opposite side of the, of the shop. So uh, he needed help to find this product. Estamos hablando de una persona que llegó a la tienda y no podía encontrar los dulces, ¿verdad? O los chocolates que quería comprar. Así que tuvo que pedir ayuda, ¿verdad? Al manager del lugar para que le dijera dónde podía encontrar estos dulces. Y resulta que no era, ¿verdad? En ese lado que iba a comprar los dulces, sino que tenía que ir al otro lado. Ahora, ¿cuál creen ustedes que es el... Um, a demonstrative pronoun that we can use on the first part of this exercise. ¿Cuál creen que es el primero que podemos utilizar ahí? Here. 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 I realized that here were no candies in the in the place. Vamos a irlo poniendo por acá. You said here. And the second one, well, have you looked over? Over there. Ah, over there. Yeah. Okay. Then we have another one and he said, but I have looked on, I looked here and I found nothing. Here. Did. Did. Here. Here. On this, you said, and it says, um, we sell chocolates way over there. 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 Okay. Then we have, I want some of. Here. Last. Okay, in almost in the in the last section, I wanted some of this. Ah, uh, we can use this, or we can use those. Mm -hmm. Luego tenemos, but now I think I will try some of.
There. There. Voy a probar algunos de esos yeah. de ahí. How can we say that? What is the pronoun that we can use? Does. Ah, those. Yeah. It could be. Those. Um, and the last one. Are It's you them. going to? Ah, them. Muy bien. Entonces, we can say that in the first one, we can use the word there. Why? Because we are saying that I realized that there were no candies in the place I was looking for. No hay eh, dulces en los lugares que yo estoy buscando. Y como está lejos del lugar, podemos utilizar there. Y ustedes dijeron here, que hmm, podríamos decir también que está cerca del lugar donde él está comprando. That here were no candies in the places I was looking for. Luego, I, have you looked over there? Has visto por allá. Um, then, but I have looked on. Those aisles there. No, eh, pero yo estuve buscando en, en aquellos lugares, ¿verdad? Estamos eh, lejos de, eh, de esos o no. En este caso, pues no. No estamos tan lejos, pero sí estamos hablando de plurales. Eh, then it says, we don't sell those candies on these aisles there or here. Si estamos cerca, vamos a decir here. Si estamos lejos, vamos a decir there. We said chocolate way over there. Porque ya estamos hablando lejos, ¿verdad? Del lugar donde estamos. Luego, I want some of these. Some of those. Podemos usarlo según la perspectiva que tengamos del de lugar donde están los dulces. Pero en este caso creo que están bastante cerca. Luego podemos decir, but now I think I will try some of these here. Algunos de esos que están aquí. Y por último, are you going to paint for them? Decían de, eh, por ellos. O en este caso, si estamos utilizando estos demonstrative pronouns, podemos decir, are you going to pay for those? Vas a pagar por esos que tienes ahí. Aquí tenemos que ir viendo también la perspectiva de cómo eh, o del lugar en el que estamos posicionados en la tienda. But that is the, ex the first exercise that we have. Now, I'm going to stop this one. And I'm going to share with you a blank document. Les voy a compartir un documento en blanco. In which you are going to help me with a short paragraph. But give me a second. So in this document, you are going to have a space in which you can write your paragraph. You are going to write a short paragraph in which you can use Some of these demonstrative pronouns. Pueden usar cualquiera de los, de, eh, de los pronombres demostrativos que ya hemos visto. Y van a escribir unos dos, tres renglones de lo que sea. But using the demonstrative pronouns. I'm going to write an example. And then I'm going to send to you this, um, this document. So give me a second because I'm writing the example.
Okay, I have the example on the document. So you are just going to see what is there and then you are going to write yeah, something that you want to say. In this case, it's something that uh, you can practice writing a short paragraph. And then uh, we are going to see like the um, the ideas that you have and the words that you have written in, in the document. So I'm going to make this one and this one and okay. So I'm going to send to you the document right now on the group. And you are going to access to the document and you can write your paragraph. Ahí está el documento ya en el grupo donde ustedes pueden accesar para poder ver el documento y poder escribir su pequeño párrafo donde van a poner en práctica el uso de los demonstrative pronouns. I have the following example. Let me see if I can see this one. I'm going to share this one. So here we have the document. I was at school when I saw something in the sky. I was very excited and I yelled to my classmates, look over there, there is something in the sky. My, classes, my classmates ran to the window and say that there is nothing. They couldn't see that ship in the sky. So you have the example there and you can write, um, three lines of something that you want to say or um, some ideas in which you can add uh, the demonstrative pronouns. Remember that we have six. That, the, um, that, this, those, and this, and also here and there. And you can uh, write uh, some ideas on the document. But I'm going to stop this one and we are going to focus on writing the um the paragraph and i'm going to put this on the screen and then in a couple of minutes we are going to see the um, the things that you are writing on the other document vamos a dar un par de minutos para que puedan escribir eh, sus pequeños párrafos en el documento y en un par de minutos lo revisaremos eh, para ver cuáles son las ideas que ustedes están compartiendo en el documento so Let's write some ideas using the demonstrative pronouns.
Okay, I'm going to stop this one and I'm going to see if you have uh, your ideas on the document. Um, yes, we have some of your ideas here, but I have just two, I guess. One, two, and three. We have three ideas, just three. Okay, in this case, we're going to have this document open. Um, so you can write. So you can write your ideas. Don't feel like um, you need to do it right now. You can uh, keep writing on the document while I'm going to begin the next topic. In this case, we're going to have a uh, second topic, you know, that we are like using almost two topics per session. And in this case, we uh, are ending the topic of the uh, demonstrative pronouns because we have the six different demonstrative pronouns that we have in English. But in this case, we are just seeing um, these six. Uh, we have some... Okay, I'm, I'm just going to read this one. Oh, sorry. And it says, this is my house. These are my dogs that keep me company wherever I go. I also, um, I mean, also these are my parents who um, I love very much. Excellent. Thank you. So in this case, I was saying that we are going to see the second topic that we are going to develop in this session. In this case, um, we were talking about the demonstrative pronouns, but now we are going to talk about time. And we are not just going to talk about, ah, what time is it? Or um, the date in which we are right now. We are going to talk about the, um, the tenses that we have in English. You know that we have uh, three main tenses um, in English, and we are going to work with uh, these three. Um, we have two that are very, very uh, useful, or that's um, the most used tenses on English, and that's the present and the past. But uh, if you can notice that we are uh, using Mm, the past tense more than the present and the future. Utilizamos mucho más el pasado que el presente y el futuro. El tiempo pasado es como el más común, el más usado, a pesar de que nosotros no lo notemos, pero es porque hablamos de situaciones que sucedieron hace tiempo o estamos hablando de experiencias que tuvimos en el pasado cercano o lejano. And that's why the past tense is one of the most used tenses in English. But in this case, we are not going to talk about the past tense or the present tense. In this case, we are going to talk about future. We are going to have two parts. We are going to begin with part one today. And tomorrow we are going to end with the, the topic of the future tense. You know that in some cases, but in this case, uh, when we are talking about the tenses, the present, uh, the past, the present, and the future, we have four parts more uh, related to these tenses. Tenemos cuatro partes en las que siempre están divididos los tiempos. En el presente tenemos cuatro partes, en el pasado cuatro partes, y ahora en el futuro vamos a tener igual eh, cuatro partes. Vamos a ver de qué se tratan esas cuatro partes. What are the elements that we are going to use with the eh, future tenses? Um, 
what is like the structure that we are uh, going to use for uh, the statements um, with the future structures um, and the uses of these structures. Así que vamos a ver diferentes informaciones, diferentes cosas relacionadas al future tense. Okay, we are going to begin with the first part. You can keep writing, don't worry. I think that later or maybe tomorrow we are going to see um, the uh, things that you... Uh, are writing on the document, so we are going to check the information that we have on that document. So, the topic that we are going to see right now is future chances. And we are, I'm sorry, we are going to begin with the first one. That is the future simple. And in this case, we are talking about will plus infinitive. We have um, like some words that we're going to use. In this case, we're going to see how to use the pronouns with the word will. For the affirmative ones, we have I will play, you will play, he, she, and it, will play, we will play, and they will play. If you can see, in this case, we are not going to apply the rule of the third person when we are uh, using he, she, or it. In this case, we um, don't have like this structure or this part in which you need to apply something else to make this... Um, a third person eh, a rule. In this case, we are not going to apply that rule. Aquí no vamos a aplicar la regla de la tercera persona en el caso cuando estamos utilizando el will, porque podemos decir que este es como un auxiliar. This one is an auxiliary that is telling me that I am using the future tense. And it is, it is explaining that I am talking about something that is going to happen in the future. For the negative, ¿cómo vamos a utilizar el will en negativo? Okay, in this case, um, we have, of course, the negative word. Okay, it says, in my house, but in this case, you need to apply the rules of the plurals. In my house, I have two dogs. They are very funny, and also they are my company. My mother is here with me forever. Good, excellent. For the negative, I will not play. You will not he, she, and it will play. 
We will not play. And they will not. And the last one is the question. In this case, you know that when we are making questions and when we are using the auxiliary words, we need to change a little bit the structure of the sentence. And in this case, we are going to put the auxiliary at the beginning of the sentence, and then we are going to continue with the subject and the complement of the statement. Siempre vamos a tratar de hacer esto con los auxiliares para hacer nuestras preguntas, ya que en las estructuras, pues nosotros vemos que en muchos de los casos, pues obviamente solo cambiamos, ¿verdad? Lo que es eh, el orden, ¿verdad? De las palabras. So in this case, it's the same thing. Will I play? Will you play? Will he, she, or it play? Will we play? And will they? Play. In this case, we need to be very focused on the fact that when we are using will, in some cases, we are just talking about the future and we think. This one is the whole future, but it is not. We can use different structures to talk about the future. And in this case, this one is yes, like. One of these options that we have to use when we are talking about the future or in the case that we want to talk about the future, but you can see that we are going to use another structures that uh, are going to function uh, like this or like uh, very well when I am talking about the future. And we can use this um, word, this specific word, the wheel, when uh, we are going to talk about future events that we believe to be certain. Podemos utilizar este, esta estructura o esta palabra wheel cuando estemos hablando acerca de eventos que pueden pasar en el futuro y que nosotros creemos que pueden ser certeros o que sí son verdad. But remember, we are talking about something that is not far in the future, but near in the future. Estamos hablando de algo cercano, no estamos hablando de mil años en el futuro. No, estamos hablando de algo que puede suceder in a couple of seconds, in a couple of minutes, in days, in a month even, but we are not talking about the whole future. Okay, and we are going to see some examples of this one. No, I don't want this. I want this. Okay, in the first one, the sun will rise over there tomorrow morning. The sun will rise over there. Tomorrow morning. Maybe we are like seeing a mountain and we say, ah, the sun will rise um, 
I mean, will rise over there tomorrow morning. Probablemente yo vea la montaña y diga, ah, el sol va a salir por allá mañana en la mañana. ¿Es totalmente, a, o, o es algo que yo estoy totalmente segura de que va a suceder? No, it is not. Porque puede que no sea así. Ya sabemos que el sol tiene su lugar específico para salir en las mañanas. Next year, I'll be 50. Why this one is not certain? ¿Por qué esta no es algo seguro? This one said, next year, el siguiente año, I will, I will be 50. Voy a tener 50. Why is not something that is certain? Well, in this case, it's because you know that uh, uh, it, it is going to sound kind of uh, weird or, or, or bad, but we can die in any moment. And we are not sure that we are going to uh, be this time. Es algo que no estamos seguros que vaya a pasar. El tiempo pues pasa volando y no sabemos en qué momento nosotros podamos fallecer, ¿verdad? Puede ser un accidente. Eh, puede ser por causas naturales, eh, diferentes cosas. So in this case, it's something that we are not certain. In my case, next year I will be, and I can say my age, but we are not sure that I'm going to complete that moment in my life. That plane will be late. It always is. That plane eh, will be late. It always be. We are not, uh, I mean, it always is. We are not sure that this one is correct. There won't be any snow. I'm certain it's too warm. There won't be any snow. I'm certain it's too warm. When we're talking about something natural, we cannot um like be certain about anything. No podemos estar seguros de eh, lo que pueda pasar en la naturaleza. Uh, we can say that tomorrow is going to um it's going to rain the whole day. But I'm sure that it's not going to be like that. Podemos decir que va a llover todo el día mañana, pero así como está la situación, empieza a llover y eh, en este caso por las noches y en el día pues está soleado. So in that case, we cannot be sure about the next action or something that is happening in nature. Okay. We are going to end the session here, but we are going to continue tomorrow talking about future and the other elements that we can use to talk about future. And also we are going to check the exercise that we have on the other document. So have a really good night and okay. see you tomorrow. See you tomorrow. See you tomorrow. See you. See you. See you. See you. See you.